Hi friends, most of you watch my channel without subscribing. Please subscribe if you like my stories. Have a good rest. The day that changed my life. It was shaping up to be just another Monday Monday. My usual routine of rolling out of bed, getting dressed in my boring work clothes, and bracing myself for the long day ahead. I never could have imagined when I left for work that morning that by the end of the day, my whole world would be turned upside down. My name is John and I'm an accountant at a small accounting firm in the city. I know, not the most thrilling job in the world, but it pays the bills and the people I work with are nice enough. I've been there for five years now, ever since graduating college. The job itself involves a lot of monotonous tasks, crunching numbers, preparing statements and reports, the usual accounting stuff. The work can get repetitive, but I've never really minded it too much. And luckily, the company doesn't expect me to put in crazy hours, which is a nice perk. So on that fateful Monday, I headed off to the office, expecting it to be another typical work day. I did my usual routine, grabbed a coffee, sat down at my desk, and started plowing through my overflowing inbox. Around noon, I decided to get out of the office for my lunch break. There was a small deli down the street that I often went to since it was quick. As I waited in line reading the menu on the wall, my eyes drifted down to the lottery ticket display behind the cashier. Now, I never really play the lottery. I don't like throwing money away on a game of chance that I know has bad odds. But for some reason on this particular day, I had the sudden urge to try my luck. When it was my turn, I ordered a turkey club sandwich and also asked for a $5 scratch-off ticket. I took my lunch order back to my office and ate at my desk, doing some internet browsing while I ate. As soon as I balled up my sandwich wrapper, I pulled out the shiny scratch ticket from my pocket. I started anxiously scratching off the foil with my fingernail, not even sure what I wanted to uncover. Slowly the symbols and numbers were revealed as I rubbed off more of the silver covering. When I scraped off the last bit, I froze in disbelief at what I saw. I had won $50,000. I stared at the ticket for a good minute, sure that it couldn't be real. But right there in front of me were the winning numbers clear as day. My mind started racing thinking about what I could do with that money. I could make a huge dent in my student loans or maybe take a vacation somewhere tropical. But what excited me most was surprising my wife Jenny with the news. I couldn't wait to see her reaction when I told her. This was really going to help move us forward financially. Without hesitation I grabbed my jacket and yelled to my boss that I had a family emergency and had to leave. I raced home, giddy with anticipation of seeing Jenny's face when I told her. I pulled into the driveway and bounded inside, calling out, Honey, I'm home, in a sing-song voice. That fateful moment is forever seared into my memory. As I opened the front door, excitedly calling out, Honey, I'm home. In anticipation of sharing my big news, that's when I heard it. A sound that would change my life. A guttural moan drifted down from the upstairs, unmistakably lustful and masculine. It turned my blood to ice, making my heart plummet straight down into the pit of my stomach. I stood paralyzed for a second that seemed to last an eternity. I pleaded internally for it to be anything but what I feared. When another louder moan rang out, the awful truth could no longer be denied. My mind reeled trying to process it. This can't be happening, was all I could think. Some instinct of primal rage overtook me then. I bolted up the stairs two at a time and sprinted down the hall towards our bedroom. The moans grew louder the closer I got. I paused just outside the door, my lungs burning. The flimsy wood frame was all that separated me from a sight I knew would destroy me. I hesitated briefly, feeling an overwhelming urge to turn and run from the horrible reality. Maybe I could leave and pretend it wasn't real. But the indignant anger rising up inside me would not be silenced. Propelled by adrenaline, I threw open the door with force, and it crashed loudly against the interior wall. The scene before me was even more sickening than I could have imagined. There was a half-naked man desperately trying to climb out the window onto the roof overhead. He scrambled outside just as I came in. At the same time, my wife Jenny emerged from the master bathroom wearing nothing but a thin satiny bedsheet. Her usually tidy blonde hair was tussled and disheveled. 
Dark streaks of mascara ran down her lightly freckled cheeks, where her face was wet with tears. Her bloodshot hazel eyes were wide with fear like a doe in headlights. When she saw me, she let out a startled cry. The bedsheet slipped off her shoulder as she reached towards me, pleading, Oh my God, it's not what it looks like. She sounded frantic, her voice cracking. But I barely heard her desperate words over the ringing in my ears. Hot tears stung behind my eyes, but I pushed them back. A tornado of emotions surged inside me. Disbelief, rage, humiliation, disgust. I had imagined this moment a thousand times, but the reality was so much worse. Chenny's mouth kept moving, but I couldn't process anything she said. It all sounded like the incoherent wailing of a wounded animal. Her pitiful tears only enraged me more. Suddenly she rushed forward and grabbed my arm, begging, please listen, you have to understand. It only happened once, I swear. I roughly shook free of her grasp, unable to stand her touching me. Don't. I roared. Just don't speak. I can't even look at you right now. A fresh wave of sobs overtook her. She collapsed back onto the unmade bed, burying her face in her hands. I realized suddenly that I needed to get out of there. I couldn't be in the same room with her a second longer. I turned sharply and flew back down the stairs, desperate to escape the agonizing scene. Without thinking, I ran out the front door to the driveway. An image of him and Jenny flashed in my mind. A renewed surge of rage coursed through me. Before I knew it, I was sprinting full speed after him like a man possessed. My legs burned and my lungs ached as I pushed myself to run faster than I ever had in my life. But the man already had too great a head start. I watched helplessly as he disappeared around a corner, slipping out of sight. Finally, I slowed to a stop, doubled over wheezing. The adrenaline seeped from my body, leaving only a hollow emptiness. I wandered back home in a daze, wishing I could erase the last thirty minutes from my mind. When I got back inside, Jenny was still a crumpled mess on the bed. Her hair hung in strings covering her flushed face. Loud guttural sobs made her body convulse. She didn't even have the decency to cover up anymore. Looking at her pathetic state conjured a hurricane of emotions inside me. I teetered between pity and revulsion, love and hate. The person I thought I knew had vanished, leaving a stranger in her place. When she realized I had returned, she shot up from the bed, letting the sheet fall to the floor. She stumbled towards me, reaching out helplessly. I recoiled instinctively from her touch. Please, John, we have to talk about this. It didn't mean anything. You have to believe that. I love you. Her words echoed meaninglessly in my ears. All I could feel was a looming sense that my life as I knew it had just been irrevocably shattered. I looked into the swollen eyes of the woman before me and saw a near stranger. Someone I wasn't sure on I had ever really known at all. The lottery ticket sat crumpled in my clenched fist, the edges digging into my palm. Just this morning, it had represented a thrilling stroke of luck, a glimmer of hope for the future. Now, it was only a painful reminder of how cruelly fate could reverse course in an instant. As I stood there rigidly looking down at my pathetic weeping wife, the ticket felt suddenly like it was burning a hole in my hand. An unwelcome burden I wanted desperately to be rid of. In one swift motion, I unfurled my fingers and flung the worthless slip of paper into Jenny's lap. She flinched involuntarily as it fluttered down, her sobs momentarily catching in her throat. I won fifty thousand dollars today. I informed her coldly. She blinked up at me with swollen red rimmed eyes, seeming confused by the abrupt subject change. I went on, my voice like a steel. I'm going to use every penny of that money to file for divorce. At first my words didn't seem to penetrate the haze of shock and despair enveloping her. But as their meaning set in, her face crumpled into fresh anguish. She buried her face in her hands, shoulders heaving with renewed cries. When she finally lifted her head, black streaks of ruined mascara trailed down her flushed cheeks. Her hazel eyes pleaded with me desperately. No, you can't. She choked out. It was just this one time, I swear. Please don't do this. Her words ignited the simmering rage inside me. Don't lie to me again. 
I thundered. Do you actually expect me to believe it was only once? Do you think I'm that stupid? She shrank back at the venom in my tone. Please, she whimpered. It's the truth. I messed up so badly, but you have to believe me. I cut her off before she could continue spinning her web of lies. Not a chance. I didn't believe a goddamn word you say. As far as I'm concerned, my wife died today. All that's left is a deceitful stranger. Fresh tears spilled down her cheeks. She reached for me pleadingly, but I recoiled from her touch. John, please listen, she begged desperately. We can get through this. I know we can. I regarded her with undisguised disgust. No, we can't. My feelings for you died when I walked through that door. All I feel now is hatred mixed with the fading scraps of love I once had. I paused, a wave of sadness washing through me. But living with one foot in love and the other in hate. I shook my head slowly. That's no way to live. The woman I thought I knew is gone. And I refuse to stay with a lie. Her eyes took on a hint of panic as she realized I meant what I said. But, but I need some of the money. She burst out suddenly, for art school. I stared at her incredulously. Was she actually attempting to profit from her betrayal? The goal left me momentarily speechless. When I found my voice, it was deadly calm. You dare ask me for money right now. You must be out of your mind. I crouched down slowly until we were eye level, causing her to shrink back. Let me make something clear, I said softly. You'll not be getting one cent from me. Jenny's sobs intensified, a slight frame shuddering as she seemed to teeter on the edge of hysteria. She clenched clumps of her blonde hair in white-knuckled fists, jerking violently as if trying to physically extract the pain. Her eyes were screwed shut now, leaking ceaseless tears that dripped from her chin. Between heaving gasps, she cried out repeatedly, Oh God, how could this be happening? How could this be happening? The words were directed at the uncaring walls, certainly not at me. She seemed to have forgotten my presence entirely, lost in the torment of her own mind. I stood rigidly, arms crossed, making no move to comfort her. Pity briefly flashed through me seeing her in such a wretched state. But it was quickly smothered by indignant anger. She had brought this on herself, and I would not be made to feel guilty for her anguish. When her wailing reached a fever pitch, I finally snapped. Stop it. Just stop. The harsh command cut through her hysteria. She froze, hands falling limply to her sides. I crouched down to her level again, so that we were face to face, close enough for her to feel the heat of my fury. In a low voice, trembling with anger, I said, You did this to yourself, Jenny. You did. This mess is your doing. Fresh tears spilled down her cheeks, but she remained silent under my seething glare. I went on ruthlessly. Carrying on like a lunatic won't undo what you've done. It won't magically fix this. I pause, a mocking note entering my tone. So please spare me the dramatic show of guilt. Jenny's eyes focused on me for the first time, widening slightly at the acid in my words. She opened her mouth, but no sound came out. Then her face crumpled as a choked sob escaped her throat. I had no tolerance left for the charade of regret. An idea occurred to me suddenly. Let me see your phone, I demanded, holding out an expectant hand. She froze, looking at me with an expression mingling surprise and fear. For several thudding heartbeats, the only sound was her shaky breathing. Through why? She finally sputtered. Her eyes flicked toward the device lying face down on the carpet. I want to see if this really was the one time you claim I bid out angrily. Panic flashed across her face. She snatched up the phone, clutching it protectively to her chest. No, she cried. I already told you nothing else happened. I shook my head in disgust. Did she think me a fool? I didn't believe you, I said coldly. You lost the right to secrecy when you betrayed our vows. Calling myself to my feet, I towered threateningly over her. She shrank back against the bed. In a low, measured tone, I said, Give me the phone. Now. I punctuated each word for emphasis. Or I walk out that door and you'll never see me again. 
Jenny stared up at me, wide-eyed and frozen. The silence swelled pregnant between us. For a moment, I thought she might actually defy me. But then her shoulders slumped in resignation. Moving as if through molasses, she held the phone out to me. I snatched it quickly before she could change her mind. Fine, she cried shrilly. If you don't trust me, just check it yourself. She was banking on me not having the patience to uncover anything too damning. But rage fueled my determination. I strode into the adjoining bathroom, locking the door decisively. Jenny immediately began pounding on it, begging me not to look through her phone. I silenced her wailing by turning on the faucet full blast. Scouring her apps, I quickly discovered a hidden messaging platform buried in an innocuous folder. My pulse raced sickeningly. Hands trembling, I opened it. My worst fears were confirmed as I scrolled through months of intimate conversations with at least three different men. Explicit plans to meet up, declarations of love, sexts filled with graphic descriptions of desired sex acts. Bile rose in my throat. I thought I had wanted the truth, but being confronted with such stark evidence of her betrayal was more agonizing than I was prepared for. When I finally emerged, pale and shaking, Jenny had collapsed into a bumless heap on the floor. She raised her head tentatively. John, she croaked. Is it really so bad that you'd throw away everything we have? It was just texting. It didn't mean anything. Red-hot rage flooded through me, momentarily blinding me. She still dared to downplay the extent of her lies. I trembled with the effort to restrain myself from striking her. Do you think me a fool? I whispered. It was not just texting. My voice rose to a roar. You plan to meet other men in secret. You tell them you love them. And yet you stand there and call it meaningless. All color drained from her face at my words. She opened and closed her mouth soundlessly. At long last, the gravity of her actions seemed to be sinking in. She could no longer rationalize or minimize them. How? Her voice cracked, and she had to begin again. How can I fix this, John? Please, I know I can make it right somehow. I regarded her evenly. You can't fix this, Jenny. Sometimes sorry just isn't enough. I felt suddenly very tired, like the weight of this day had added ten years to my soul. Lip quivering, she stammered, I don't know why I did it. I was bored, I guess. I never meant to hurt you. You have to believe me that I still love you. I recoiled at her words. We've been married five years and you got bored? I don't think I can ever trust you again after this. It's over between us. I turned quickly so she wouldn't see the tears forming in my eyes and headed downstairs. I collapsed onto the living room sofa, using a throw pillow and blanket to make up a makeshift bed. I shouted upstairs harshly, I'm sleeping down here until you move out. If you even try to speak to me again, I'll tell your sister what you did. Her sister was very religious and Jenny worked hard to maintain a similar image in her eyes. Apparently the threat was effective because I heard the spare bedroom door slam shut and she didn't attempt to talk to me the rest of the night. I laid awake for hours playing the image of her and that man over and over in my mind crushed that she could do this to me. The next morning I called my friend Jake who's a divorce lawyer and had him start drafting the paperwork. Then I met up with my dad to tell him what was going on. He was furious on my behalf, telling me that Jenny didn't deserve me. Since my mom left when I was really young, he was the only family I had. Update. Later that week, I reconnected with two of my best friends from high school, Sam and Ryan. We met up for some beers so I could vent and try to make sense of everything. They were shocked and kept telling me I'd done nothing to deserve this. I was so grateful to have their support during this difficult time. Meanwhile, Jenny remained holed up in the spare bedroom, probably realizing her comfortable lifestyle was about to come crashing down. A few days later, she finally texted me timidly asking for some money to help her move out. I scoffed and reminded her the fridge was stocked with food and she didn't need anything from me. But she persisted, saying I was legally required to financially provide for her until the divorce was finalized. I realized I needed to act quickly to protect myself. I met with my lawyer the next day 
and had him include an ironclad postnuptial agreement in the divorce papers, stating she would get nothing from me in the settlement. I left the thick stack of documents on the kitchen counter with a note instructing Jenny to sign them. With no income or lawyer of her own, she had no choice but to sign the papers that would leave her with nothing. I'll admit it felt good to have this small victory after the agony she put me through. A few days later, I gave her formal notice she had 30 days to move out of the house we once shared. As expected, she was furious when she realized there would be no financial payoff for her despite the five years we were married. In a fit of spite, she called her sister and told her everything, ensuring she'd have a place to stay. I didn't care where she went, as long as she was out of my life for good. As it turned out, the scumbag she cheated on me with wanted nothing to do with her anymore after finding out she was married. She ended up having to move into her sister's cramped studio apartment and sleep on a lumpy pull-out couch. Karma really is sweet sometimes. In contrast, I was finally starting to feel happy again being on my own. I reconnected with some old high school friends and even started casually dating a nice woman I met through work. After being tied down for so many years in an unhealthy relationship, I was really learning to enjoy my own company again. I used some of the lottery winnings to take a solo trip overseas, something I'd always wanted to do, but never had the means for. When I returned, I started focusing more time on my hobbies and personal goals, like training for a half marathon and taking photography classes. Investing in myself was so rewarding and helped me move on. The latest I heard, Jenny is still bouncing from job to job trying unsuccessfully to get back on her feet financially. She blew through the little savings she had partying and trying to numb the pain of her circumstances, I suppose. Sometimes I almost feel bad for her, but then I remember the choice she made that led to all this. I'm just grateful I uncovered her lies when I did and got out. So in the end, the lottery ticket that seemed so lucky at the time actually brought me much more. It gave me the means to leave a toxic relationship and start over fresh. And it taught me not to fear being alone, that I'm stronger than I realized. I'm forever thankful for that fateful day and the unexpected twist of fate that in hindsight gave me a new lease on life. I can't wait to see where my next chapter takes me.